I, you know, I, I know that these people talk about how they're gonna frame me, right? It, this this childlike individual saying that you know we're gonna we're, I'm gonna say you did this to me like some things like that right listen I would not doubt that people here perps would sell their children uh, for the purpose of framing people now they were trying to do that and make it seem like we're figures we we're, we're there to do this when in reality these people are the same people involved in torturing women and children this is not the the fantasy the distorted reality they've tried to to put together. It's something that I can I can never let them live the fantasy. So you see this perp, right? Uh, she gets up, she does things to try to, to like kind of disorient me and make me subscribe. But she, the way th this person is not a stupid person, right? But you see a smart person who turns into a child almost when she tries to be all gimmicky. It, it's just like it's, they turn into like children. That's why I'm not surprised that children could be involved in this program because as an adult, intellectual, smart person, you yourself have to make yourself almost a childlike individual. I've seen that in real time because this person wants to live that fantasy, right? Where somehow she's not in a program that is killing and tormenting women and doing horrible things to children. This, this is like the foulest thing you can imagine. But she wants to live off this fantasy, this manipulated reality, this distorted reality where they can make me think however they want in the most distorted, distorted, disturbing ways. And on top of that, try to make it seem like we're doing that because you did this, and you know, when you were a kid, you did, when, oh, for that woman, the, when they're in a program that is literally ch torturing children, infants. And they do this. And they try to distance themselves from the fact that they're part of that same program that does this to women and children. That these people doing this thing to me are the same people doing this thing to women and children. I don't care if these people specifically had had the, the, you know, the participated in the torture of women and children. But I can reassure you, there's plenty of people doing these things to me that you are working with currently that are doing these things to me that have done that to women and children. Some more than others. But to think I'm going to let them live that fantasy, and live the, this disorienting reality they put together, never. They can distort reality as much as they want, but I'm not going to let them escape from that. Reality is going to be knocked in. It's going to come. It, uh, whatever torture I go through, it's not going to stop from reality. I can be tortured in the longest for, the, for years, but the fact that they're in a program that is torturing women and children is something that I'll never let them escape from. These people are torturing women and children. Their tortures include sexual torturing children and women. They use these childlike people to try to kind of create this distorted reality. One thing, you know, to disorient me is like, no, it's our torture, not trash. You can't even say Roy Moore. You understand whose torture it is, right? I'm not going to let you escape. You're in a program that's torturing children. Your torture consi consists of torturing babies, you fucking trash. I'm sorry for the language, but this is what this bottom feeders wants to escape from. I rather starve to death, bomb, like they say, like so many other people they've tortured and turning, they end up living in the street because they'd rather die in the street than be in the, in the, in the, their apartment where they get radiated or their houses. Then being a bottom feeder here working in this program that does these horrible things and then think that this is living. I can, I'd rather die slow. But for them to think I'm going to let them escape into that fantasy, these bottom feeders, these nobodies. That are obviously just the, these tools that the, these governmental entities are just using to implement these tactics. Never. They know what they do. I mean, uh, for me, the way I look at it is like, let, they, they better understand that, enjoy these moments of whatever pleasure, whatever incentives, whatever you're getting is coming at a price. You're already selling your children for it. So don't worry, you, more is going to come to you. You're going to have to cover it for it. You have to go, you're going to have to distort reality for it. But I'm not going to let you escape. These people are trash. I will never let them live. Everything I've said has come to, to in, into reality. Everything. They are here abusing and torturing children using this technology and then try to talk about you as a child. And exaggerate reality. They're in a program that's literally suffocating even seven-year-old children with autism. What kind of fucking low life can try to block that reality? I'm not going to let them live their fantasy. Target individual, see them for what they are. You see this person, you know, I have, a, I have my surveillance camera, right? Um, of course, they can jam it whenever, right? Sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes. So this is like six in the morning. 
right? But Miss Somebody could have came in, she could have let people come in and do all these kind of things, and I would have never known. I don't care that they do that because I know they do these things to much more vulnerable people, women and children. Women are telling, talking about different stories of what happens to them. A lot of them are saying the same things. They have special, they are doing sexual, te- sexual torture to women. And it is a pattern of those torture being happening. And I know these people doing this thing to me have done that and will be doing that to women. Some have done it more than others, but they've, they're the same people doing this thing to me. And so when I see these people, you know, for me, they try to present themselves with a psyop. First of all, I know who put me in this program. Perhaps that's why the psyop is there. Because the people who put me in this program are extremely conservative and are truly, truly moving this country in ways that you don't even understand. And this cowardly life that have distorted reality, try to live this delusional reality, deceive themselves into thinking that this is, this is, this is, this is not going to come back to them. They truly live off a distorted reality, which I'm glad they do, because then reality hits. If you see how delusional, you should, even when you see them, you see like the, the like cluelessness of like how they even appear. It's just scary. It's like you are truly a bottom field. Oh, that shit is going to hit you bad. But in the meantime, watch me torture, scream, and really, all this delusional, th- whatever. But you, who cannot even save Roy Moore, who is in a program filled with pedophiles running this program, you torture women and children who have to make yourself sound a certain way with this tonality that when in person I see you and they try to talk that way, it's just, that somehow it doesn't work. For me, I've said something that I keep saying, this feels biblical. This feels like I'm surrounded by people who have sold their soul, maybe to devil, but I don't think so. I think more to pedophiles. And are trying to get you to subscribe to this fantasy. It's okay. They sold their soul. They were pretty cheap. They're going to get theirs. But to all my target individuals, this person that walks by my... I, I, I won't be surprised if whatever frame they, she's involved in. But one thing is for sure. As they try to create that side up, see them for what they are. Listen to what they do to women and children. is working in private practice with young children. I had a seven-year-old client who has autism, and she was the most significantly affected of all of my clients. I eventually had to tell this client to go to another clinic, and they used her to threaten the most torture in me as well as their most extreme forms of torture. For several months, she would cry and scream horribly during our therapy sessions despite having a great day at school. This was highly unusual behavior for her, as she usually behaved very well during her therapy sessions and had been making incredible progress on all of her therapy goals. This was used to threaten extreme torture on me, making me scream and cry, etc. 
they would make the kids act out the kinds of torture that would later be done on me. For example, they would also sometimes make her bite her hand, threatening to make me bite my hands, as they often do. One day, she had a large, severe bite mark on her arm. She has also grabbed her crotch, saying, ow, and this was used to threaten me with severe sexual torture. <clears throat> one day, I was observed... One day, I also observed her gasping for air a few times in the same way that I do when I am being more severely suffocated. The suffocation had been in a mild state for a while up until this point. Many of their torture methods are cyclical in severity. Right after I saw this child being suffocated, then I began to experience very extreme suffocation all day, every day, for about two months straight, and that's also when they made it worse when I eat. And I also work with a four-year-old little girl with Down syndrome, as well as her five-year-old sister who also has Down syndrome. I observed both of these girls suddenly grabbing their genitals in pain and verbalizing, ow. I observed this at least on one or two occasions for each of them during their separate sessions. during one of my three-year-old clients suddenly grab his crotch and lean forward in his chair. And then he made a frightening grimace of severe pain. I asked him what was wrong and if he needed to use the restroom, but he said no to having to use the restroom and was not able to verbalize anything more due to his language delay. He looked puzzled and bewildered. Even though I had stated that it was time to do more work right before this incident, I quickly just let him play another game and he quickly returned to his joyful, happy self again. In other sessions, he has also grabbed his crotch and said, ow, while looking up at me. Tribute the former prime minister of Poland and in and out, etc. They also often force vaginal discharges and zap my genitals at the same time. These sexual assaults are present throughout the day, every day, and any time I am awakened at night, every night. They range from mild to extreme, but usually involve daily and nightly continuous assaults for the past three years now. When severe, the zaps to the genitals feel as though someone is electrocuting my genitals repeatedly. I also often see highly disturbing pornographic images and videos, including highly disturbing pedophilia type of images and videos when I close my eyes. This is the alteration of the smell sensation so that I am often made to smell various things, including smoke, burning, dirty diaper, or baby powder, which they sometimes combine with the pedophilia type of torture, including the threat of planted dreams and videos in my collection of voices, noises, and V2K, or voice to skull. This involves the projection of voices, noises, and music directly into my mind to communicate with me in real time and at the speed of thought. And it also includes the manipulation of thoughts, emotions, and perceptions in the person's mind. Additionally, the targeting is all highly perverted and sexual as well as just... But then I told them that they would never take my will and since we all know how the psychopaths groups work with what the TI says or does, then they started during the nights to run some kind of beam where suddenly I've been wakened up at 3 o'clock in the mornings and some kind of voice comes and say phrases, sound incomprehensible and... Some other times can actually catch what is saying, ITS not my voice, a different voice, and I realize that they are trying to program for me to take it in a way that I won't notice a possible change in my behavior. Of course this is not new, because one main thing this program is out there, is called behavior modification for the indesirable, and that's one of the excuses this groups give for the neighbor T.O. join, deception. I learned to talk back, in my mind, during the process when I was awakened, and I would say demeaning things, that I cannot repeat it in this blog, you know what I mean, since they had violated me for so long, I decided to aggravate them with words, in my mind, I can hear my own voice, I told them I'm going to make you pay for all of the years of torture that I've taken, and all you are going to here is aggravation, for every single second of my privacy that you have taken away, from me and my family. 
It's said this the slaves began a program of perversion. First was with my dog. I am very playful with my pet. And suddenly one day that I was petting him I felt strange, in the sense of the word. I thought, this is strange, and then afterwards that strange sensation continued. Then in that moment I realized that was impost, so I thought, look at this losers, don't know how to put me down, and they are doing this. So I told them that I know what you are trying to do, and I started laughing, and then I said again out loud, you'll never take my will, ass, so just to show them that I meant what I said, I kept playing with my dog, and even though that attacks continue, I don't let them get me. Today they continue with the programming of perversion, but this time they are aiming in the use. A people, better said young people, also children and homosexuals. When I aggravated them I usually called demeaning names, and one of them is referring to homosexuals. For me all of the slaves are misfits, society haters, scumbags etc. No, I don't have anything personal against them, homosexuals, but as my way to aggravated the slaves, and since they love to use children for the torture and stalking, street theater etc. Especially teenagers for the stalking at close range with an attitude, they are using them during my sleep in the perversion program, and so you can imagine what the slaves of torture are pretending to do to me. In the last days, as today September 9th, 07, anything I do, either watching TV or reading of whatever I'm doing, they brush me sort of say, I feel like I'm aroused all day and I feel the palpitations in my genitals for what I'm thinking, and since the attack comes so quickly, I realized my programming has been set on auto, in their central computers, no handlers could do something like this that quick, what make me realized, the slaves are desperate to get me. Unfortunately for them they are facing a strong wall where no matter how much their computers EAP me, I know I'm not changing. As I said, I feel like they've been set up a beam where I feel constantly stimulated, I'm talking sexually, like a heat in my genitalia. Urbanized stalking, electronic harassment, microwave torture, V2K abuse, and I'm asking you to help us and this crime against humanity, which has impacted men, women, children all around the world. Hi, I'm Wan from Malaysia. My family are targeted individual. We are victims of cyber torture. And I will not give up. I will fight to the end. And I'm a victim of organized uh, We stalking, need this to stop. Electronic harassment, sir. And I'm speaking to you on International Targeted Individual Day. I live in the U.S., in Illinois, and I'm a victim of organized uh, We need this to stop. Electronic That's harassment, it. microwave torture. I've been targeted for nine years. 24-7. Please become more aware of this crime and those that the crime is being committed against. We need your support and help in ending this crime. Hello, my name is Wendy Brown. I'm a targeted individual who is living in New Zealand, but my targeting began in California. I'm an American citizen, and the targeting continues in New Zealand. I'm making this video. We're the Russian government, we're the Chinese government, we're evil aliens, we're Satan's, you know, satanic ritual abuse. Uh, we're, and I've heard all the stories. One guy believed it was his, uh, some 14-year-old kid with an Xbox that lived next door. The trickery really is that great when you're under hypnosis that people will believe something other than a massive government. Uh, it's somebody trying to end who I am as a person. It's somebody trying to take over my mind, putting thoughts of pet. Like, this disgusting, disgusting, disgusting thing. And you saw where I was going with that first word. Disgusting things that I don't even want to talk about because it makes me sick. I don't even like those words in my mind. But it is what it is. So I have no choice now but to acknowledge that there are people in my in my surroundings or whatever they're doing. I don't know how they do it. I don't care. I don't know if it's through my friends. I don't know. I don't occasion I was told I was gonna to be shot in the face and it was an older guy. He was like really, really disgruntled and pissed off. Yeah, you're gonna be shot in the face. 
you know, sound like an angry ass old person. You know, then a couple of days later, a female said the same thing. Don't oh, get shot in the face. You know, stupid shit like that. But what I really noticed is with the voice of skull, it's a bunch of females. You know, and I'm like, bro, <laughs> really? You're not a woman. What? Real woman would stalk another. I had all. And they had, um, all of a sudden, I, I had been there like four or five days and then use their telephone um, so I could make airline, you know, flight because all I wanted to do was leave Chicago. And um, so I figured I'd make my plans in a hotel. I didn't think that they could hack the hotel. I was very naive back then. I didn't understand the full technology spectrum or even um, interest, you know, and all I wanted to do was leave. So um, I was at a hotel on a relatively high floor and they had, um, all of a sudden I, I had been there like four or five days and the night before I was attacked really bad um, I noticed a maintenance man about 10 or 11 o'clock at night messing with all of the lights up and down the hallway and as um, I'm sorry I get kind of upset when I think about this because it's really messed up um, and my spidey sense went off and I was really kind of nervous about like what the hell he was doing out there because it, it, it he was kind of a sinister he was real creepy kind of person so um so the next night I believe it was a Friday night I went to bed I had all of the doors all the locks on the door even the um the the one that kind of like goes over that you can't open from the outside I had everything locked up figured I was safe um, I went to bed maybe about one o'clock in the morning. I woke up about four thirty, five o'clock in the morning, uh, bleeding out of every hole, uh, sick. Someone was in my room, um, or had been in my room. Uh, food was missing. My dogs were traumatized. Um, I had been obviously sexually assaulted, uh, in all the worst ways possible. I got up, first thing I did was vomit. And all I wanted to do was just, I was just in shock. Um, there was a do not disturb sign on my door and I didn't do this. And there was um, lotion all over my bathroom floor. Um, all I wanted to do was just get on a plane and get the hell away from everybody. And I was, um, you know, very, very sick and in a lot of pain. Um, I had already been denied a rape kit when I owned my house um, and woke up and um, pulled out and there were earplugs in my bed. And I felt like someone had done something. I went to Payless Community Hospital um, under the directions of a, a non-compromised police officer who told me that if anything happened to go right to the hospital. So I did and I had a compromised doctor who treated me like a third-rate citizen and said she would give me an STD test and a drug test, but that doesn't, but she refused me a rape kit. And um, so I had already been kind of traumatized with hospitals anyway, and honestly just wanted to leave. So um, I kind of, I stayed in my room until about checkout. And then um, when I was, downstairs waiting for my cab to come um, to take me to the airport because I just was going to get on a plane. I had $10,000 in my pocket and just wanted to leave. Um, there was a young man who uh, had to have been no more than 23, 24 years old. And he comes up to me and he goes, promise you'll take me back to my room and I'll be okay. And like was mocking me. And I'm like, what? what the fuck, you know, and um, kind of looked at him and there was a girl with him, a young girl, once again, shocked by how young they were. And she